just going to move right ahead. Uh, thank you, Ben. That was the best I've ever heard you. That was just five. No, just, just teasing there. Pastor George Lee, where are you? This is our friend. There you are. Come right on up here. Uh, we're just going to believe God that the, there's going to be no more squealing in the, uh, through the system here and that the, the, no more fires, okay? Oh, you've got a microphone? Okay. I love this man of God right here, and uh, he has blessed us this weekend, and he is he's one of our best friends. He, by the way, is a part of our uh, leadership team here at Christ Family Church. He's a part of our oversight team, and he is a, he's a great man of God. You guys, I know you've come to really love him. Let's all just stand together and give a warm welcome to Louisiana from Deritter, <laughs> Pastor George Lee Glass. It must, there we go. Before you're seated, whoa, 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 whoa. look at your neighbor and say, I don't believe, at any time before this in my life, that you have had the privilege to sit with anybody nicer. And you may be seated. <laughs> Bless you today. Thank you for allowing me this incredible opportunity. Uh, Pastor Tim, where are you? Pastor Tim, where, where are you? There's Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim, would you stand, please? And uh, I walked in this morning, and I just I slipped by Pastor Tim a moment. I said, Pastor Tim, remind me. I said, uh, 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 1130, right? He said, eh, 1115. So sit down, Pastor Tim. I just want, want you to know I know what time it is. And uh, Brian, would you stand, please? Brian, would you stand, please, sir? Would you stand with your pillow, sir? Brian, pick up your pillow. I was being a gentleman, hold your pillow, hold it up like you snuggle on it. There you go. And so this morning, I was at the back of the bus uh, as the gentlemen were unloading, continue to stand, continue to hold your pillow. And I was going to be a Christian as we talked about a band of brothers this week and all of us coming together, helping one another. And so I grabbed uh, Brian's pillow, which was on top of his roller suitcase. And uh, you know how suave he looks. He looks so cool pulling that. I look like a, oh, never mind, going down the street. But, but uh, anyway, so I grabbed his pillow and I started. He said, no, 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 don't, don't do that. As if to say, you know, I don't want you carrying my luggage. And I thought, wasn't that nice of him? Then here's what came out of his mouth. Don't take my pillow. If you're preaching, I'm going to need that. <laughs> so I said, dude, you better have that pillow with you on the chair, Okay. Now, some of you might want to buy that from him or rent it about halfway through, but I just, I w <laughs> so that, if you wonder why Brian's got his pillow, that's why he's got his pillow. And uh, Casanova, would you stand? Everybody say hi, Casanova. Come on, Cass. Come on, Cass. So I had this incredible man by the name of Daniel. Daniel, would you stand? Who makes this awesome Mexican cornbread for our chili night. And so it was a wonderful Mexican cornbread. And Daniel brings me a bowl, and I'm talking to Cass. And I've got this bowl of just cornbread. And so, Pastor Delia, I, 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 I wanted to taste it, so I broke me off a little corner, okay? That's actually pastoral rule 101. Don't ever take a big bite of anything anybody offers you that's for free, okay? <laughs> Eat a small bit, you know, and that way you're safe. So I broke me off a nice little corner, and I want you to know that cornbread melted in my mouth. It was what I would call a, 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 a Mexican cornbread. It had some spice. Man, it was wonderful. So I'm looking at Cass. Stand up, Cass. Stand up again. Turn around let everybody see your face. All the way, Cass. All the way. Okay. That is Casanova from Beaumont. All right. So sit down now, Cass. And so I said, Cass, you ought to taste this. So I put the bowl right there in front of him. You know what he did? He took his five-finger discount hand and squeezed that whole piece of cornbread. Then broke him off this clump that kind of broke up in his hand and stuffed it in his mouth. Then gave me the bowl back. <laughs> Casanova, that is rude. That is not the way... You do food. So what happens, I walk in the church this morning, and I won't point anybody's name, but I'd love for him to stand up and just confess. I walked in the green room, the area there in the back, the fellowship room. Oh, thank you. 
Pat, won't you go and stand up? Where are you, Pat? Where are you, Pat? Where are you, Pat? Pat, everybody say hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. So Pat walks up to me with, with ah, uh-uh, Pat, don't sit down yet. <laughs> and so here we are, Christ Family Church. For those of you that are here first time, this is how these people treat you. And so I walked in, and, and Cass hands me this kolache. And I'm reaching for it, and he goes, thought you might want it. <laughs> Juliet, and I want them to remember a scripture that I quoted, but they all know that I don't like somebody handling my food, okay? <laughs> Pastors Paul and Delia Russell, you are mentors in my life. You are warriors in my spirit, and I'm honored to serve along beside you. And uh, I do want each of you to know that I am envied by much that Houston has to offer. Cyprus, the entire region. My wife loves to come here and spend Louisiana money. But I want you to know that while DeRitter is 13,000 people, 33,000 in the parish, your pastor, Delia Russell, comes to DeRitter and shops and buys clothes. Just want you to know, Neiman Markup has no... Some of you got it. Has nothing on DeRitter. Is that right, Miss, Miss Delia? So I am always blessed that somebody could come to DeRitter and, and shop. This morning I am blessed to share with you, and Pastor Paul, I take um, no uh, moments in this house as um, any sort of for, for, for granted or uh, liberty, but I want you to know that when you speak at our house, and these gentlemen, the five of the 13 that came that are still here, uh, the six, uh, in fact, there's seven of you that stayed, uh, we all know what this man does in our house, do we not? And uh, I'm proud of you. Thank you for your ministry. And any time that y'all need a break from him, we'll be glad to... The book of Genesis introduces for us a concept of relationship. Our theme this weekend embraced the themes of Christ's family church. Meeting God, finding freedom, discovering purpose, and impacting your world. And without question, I firmly believe that the men... Of this house, not just those that attended the retreat, the epic men's retreat, but the men of this house are on a parallel journey with God because of the contagiousness of the spirit that was on that campground this weekend that cannot, that cannot be thwarted, nor the fire put out. I loved when the alarm went off a while ago. I just really thought that that was just all the fire of the guys in here, Pastor Paul, that finally set the alarm off. Just all that supercharged electric. You know, you know, fire happened at Pentecost. Why can't it happen at Cyprus every Sunday? Amen. When the Spirit was first poured out, it was fire. Genesis message translation. Chapter 12, verse 1. God told Abram, leave your country and your family and your father's home for a land that I will show you. This is the message translation. God told Abram, leave your country, your family, and your father's home for a land that I will show you. Then, after the challenge, he offers a promise. Let me remind you, God will never challenge you without adding to it a promise. You will never have a challenge from God that will not follow with a guarantee. If you don't remember anything, remember that whenever your life is being challenged by God to go somewhere, please know that you will go there with something with you and following you. 
He says, I'll make you a great nation and bless you. Message translation says, I'll make you famous. You'll be a blessing. And it doesn't mean famous in the cultural concept that we believe now of famous. But I'll make you known. And what it really means in the depth is I will recognize you. Doesn't mean rec- men will recognize you. It means I'll recognize you. Let me encourage you. Is it not true that we don't need men's recognition? We want God's recognition. And then he says, I'll bless those who bless you. Those who curse you, I'll curse. And all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. In this capsulating passage of scripture that would actually take you on a journey if you had time to read it later that would take you through the 13th chapter you find the journey that Abram Abraham went on to pursue God's plan and this is what I want to speak to you about today I'm going to give you several points and I want you to embrace those who fit you and Hopefully, again, allow your life to be altered from this day forward. I need one more favor, and I'd like for you to look at your neighbor and say, Do you like me now? Don't give them time to answer. Just look back at them one more time and get ready to look away. If you've got two neighbors, do it to both of them. But look at them and say, Do you like me now? Abram has a choice. You have a choice. Abram has been challenged to go. And you have been challenged to go. You see, life in its fullest is a progression. Life at its fullest is a progression. Some people choose to live at certain stations in their life that are often event-oriented. I'm talking about life. I know people that have had things and events happen in their life that they never move from that. I know people in Christianity that have had moments of encounter with God, and yet they stayed there. They did not move from there. I personally believe this. If your theology is not changing, then you've kind of lost track with God. Because theology is the study of God. And when you study God, you're never going to find out all about him that you need to know. There's there's not enough. Look at your neighbor and say, kind of like you. Don't have you figured out yet. So Abram gets up and watch this. He leaves. And there goes with him, and you can read the story, his family, his nephew, his wife, his children. And I want to give you this first point, and just simply this. If you're going somewhere, choose people that want to go. Choose people that want to go. We've all tried to talk people into going somewhere that we wanted to go, but they didn't want to go. Amen? Amen? Anybody ever had to drag our term, anybody, somewhere? And you were more tired when you got there? And you just almost wish I'd have gone by myself. Come on, just be honest with me. Is there any wives in here this morning that will admit that your husband went on the retreat and it just really did not, you did not lay awake and cry? Oh, come on. Brent, are you telling me that that woman cried while you were gone? She she, uh said, Juliet Lewis just sat up and fretted. He knew you were just panicking because he was away. If I, could, if I could give something, choose people that want to go somewhere. That's what I love about Christ Family Church. You're going somewhere. 
And not everybody might want to go. And guess what? If they don't want to go, it's okay. Doesn't mean you don't love them. Amen? Hang around people that want to go somewhere. Get a part of a church family that's headed somewhere. Because only in going somewhere can you encounter people that need to go somewhere. True? Anybody ever been a part of a kind of a dead place? I'm not talking about church necessarily, but I've been to some of them. I know the guys from Honduras have. (laughs) I'm thankful for guys that are not Honduran that want to be on missions fields doing a work because they're headed somewhere. And how do I know that? Because now they're sending people out that are going somewhere because they've attracted guys that want to go somewhere. Why? Because they went somewhere. And I promise you this, after three days in Houston, they don't want to stay in Houston. We have nine red lights, traffic lights in DeRitter. Nine traffic lights, one train track that will hold you at the length and the maximum seven minutes. It's a cruel world. The line at Sonic is the longest line you'll ever go through at happy hour. (laughs) And Sonic is our best happy hour. I won't get into that, but... (laughs) Some of you have been to some... Never mind, I'm going to... Go with people who are willing to take others on their journey. Do it like this. Travel with the unselfish. Abram traveled with people that were unselfish. How do I know that? Because at one point, Abram looks at Lot and he says, You take what you want, I'll take the rest. Just like this week when Daniel brought me the cornbread and Casanova stole it and squinched it and and messed it up. See, Casanova got offended because Daniel didn't bring him cornbread. But I was so willing to share that he just took his frustrations out on my cornbread. (laughs) Squeezed it. Puttied it. And then looked again at me as if to say, now let's just see how loving you are. So I licked the bowl. Because you see, some people will put their hands all over your stuff, squeeze the life out of you, and they don't want to go anywhere with you. All they want to do is just mess in your stuff. And you end up fretting more about their hands being all over everything in you, and they haven't given you or helped you with anything. All they've done is taken from you. And I'm simply going to say this. You can love them, but you don't have to worry about taking them with you. You say, Pastor, you're being cold. No, I'm wanting you to see that at some juncture in our lives, your responsibility is not to be affected by people. Your responsibility is to affect people. You have been called by God, affected by God. And your responsibility is to affect them. Anybody here ever been frustrated by your neighbor? Pastor Digger did not raise her hand, but... I called this week, and I wanted to know if I needed to bring my linens. Just a courtesy call. And Pastor Delia had Pastor Paul put my linens on my bed. <gasps> I want you to know he did not take them off. He watched me take them off. As if to say, nah, 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 nah. tell her now, I don't care. Travel with the unselfish. If you know anybody in your life that's unselfish, watch how they affect you. In this story, Abram, who becomes the father of a great nation, Abraham, Sarai, that becomes Sarah, were not selfish. Thank you for the way that the offering was taken. Justin, thank you for your prayer. You don't have to give. You're blessed to give. God doesn't need your money. I'll say it carefully. The ministry of this church really does not need your money because you're not the source. 
God's the source. When we start to think we're it, He's put into your hands the resources for you to be able to be a blessing. Amen? And we need to understand the importance of being a benefit. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a blessing. Say, you are a blessing. Build relationships with those who aren't afraid to step out of the CZ, I call it. Everybody say comfort zone. <laughs> well, we had some guys this week, I love it, a band of brothers that stepped out of the comfort zone. Pastor Paul, I cannot wait. This, this is an epic conference like the, none of the others I've been to, four that I've been privileged to be a part of. And I just want you to know, Pastor Kenneth, thank you for the brilliance of your team and coming together and, and, and establishing these relationships of purpose and freedom and, 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 and meeting God and knowing God and impacting your world because this house is about to change. There's a dynamic that's transferring in this place. And we're building relationships with those who aren't afraid to get out of their comfort zone. Let me remind you, if you're in your comfort zone, you might be walking by yourself. And when you're walking by yourself instead of walking with him, you'll end up going places only you are familiar with and safe in. And our lives are not supposed to, as believers and Christians, we're not supposed to live safe. Nobody wants, I'm going to say it carefully, nobody wants a safe pastor. You want a man who's willing to take you to some pastures you've never gone to before. Chris, stand up. Chris, stand up. Turn around. That is a Cajun. Registered. Got papers. Sit down, Chris. His last name is pronounced Duyon. That's spelled D-U-H-O-N, but it's Duyon. I take Chris and one of his Cajun friends, David Abshire, on a trip with me to Monroe, Louisiana to preach on a Saturday night. I didn't realize till we got halfway there, they had never been out of Beauregard Allen Parish. They had never been, they'd, they'd always lived in South Louisiana. They had never, when they saw the first Ryan's restaurant, it was like, whoa, dude. Oh, yeah, a couple. <laughs> 18 years ago. So I'm having them drive me home on a Saturday night trying to get back for church on Sunday morning. And I wake up after giving them directions and all I'm hearing is two Cajuns talking. Until you get two, one Cajun can talk your head off. But you get two of them, totally confuse you. The great thing about having an occasion for a friend is you never have to speak. They just talk. They're one-man conversation. <laughs> and these two guys are talking. And, and, and I realize that the directions that I gave them, they have totally ignored. And they have got me in the middle of the night on a road that is the wrong road in the wrong place. And I said, guys, where, in the, where, where have you been? Oh, I don't know. And they're like, great time. One of the jokes about cages in Louisiana is this. If, 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 you, if you have a traffic jam and it's longer than seven minutes, they'll get a grill out and start fixing boudin in a traffic jam. <laughs> Build relationships with those who aren't afraid to step out of their comfort zone. Abram had to leave everything. You know what? You might have to leave some stuff, and there's some stuff that you don't need to take with you. If right now I, I said, why don't, why don't we go? In fact, Miss Delia, I've been in your beautiful home. What if I said, Miss Delia, I want you to move to Doritter and I want you to leave everything in your house? <laughs> and Kenneth, I said, we're going to buy you everything brand new. But she, she might want to say, well, yeah, I got this picture of Kenneth. No, you can't take that picture of Kenneth. I know he was cute once. And she might say, well, you know, I bought this at Cato's in DeRitter. And I really want to take that beautiful leather jacket. I said, no, 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 no. See, Abram got up and he left and he went with a promise. 
I want to speak to you today. If God's talking to you, don't be afraid to worry about what you're taking with you. Because he's got something better than what you've ever had or ever experienced. And I'm talking about your relationship with him right now. Some of us have been in the same place. We're living in a tent in the same place, building the same thing, holding on to our same relationship with him. And he's wanting you to go somewhere else. But I'm telling you today, in the power of the Holy Ghost that I feel right now, you're being called to step up, to step out, and to go. And don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. How many of you have shopped at the same grocery store for at least a year? Oh, come on now. How many of you buy some of the same brands? You bought them for five years. I'm not telling you to change brands. I'm just telling you that. How many of you don't like it when they rearrange the store that you go to all the time? (laughs) Some of your greatest frustrations that the dial soap is not on the same aisle. Why did they move it? Do you know why they move that stuff? So you'll pass other stuff. And if you pass other stuff, you'll see other stuff. And if you see other stuff, you might be intrigued with other stuff. And you're still going to go buy your regular stuff. God's wanting to take us some places that we might not have been before. Let me move ahead quickly. Number four, watch out for hostage takers. If you're not careful, hostage takers will take you hostage and stagnate and stifle your life. Everybody in your life is not interested in where you're going. They're interested in keeping you where you are. And if people are not willing to go where you want and feel God's leading you, there is thing, such a thing as saying, I respect you, I, I appreciate you, but I've got to go. See, some people aren't on God's timetable, and you're either going to be subjected to theirs or his. Fifthly, do not misunderstand the terminology that I use here. But if intimacy in your life and relationships does not give birth to new opportunities, you need to examine those relationships. If you have intimate friendships and relationships in the church that you're a part of, in the friendships that you're a part of, if it's not giving birth to new vision in your life, then you need to make sure that you look at those relationships very long because intimacy will bring forth life. And if you're in a dead relationship with people, with people that are pulling you down, then you need to re-examine that relationship. And certainly if it's happening in your life with Christianity, if you're allowing people to influence you over what the Word of God is influencing you, you need to re-examine that relationship because intimacy with God will bring forth life. Amen? How many of you have children that act like your spouse? Some of you didn't catch that or you're scared. How many of you have children that act like your spouse? How many of you have children that act like you? There's a bunch more of you. Because some of you wouldn't blame your spouse for the way that child's acting. Because it... <laughs> It's amazing, my son Lee, that, that Pastor Karen, Pastor Digger, she always, when Lee's doing great, he's like the Welburns. That boy is a Welburn through and through. And then every now and then, he pulls a George Lee. Well, all the glasses do that. It's never said with love. (laughs) And then now, what Lee will do is, he will say this. He has come to the conclusion, when when he messes up, you know what he'll say? He'll say, Dad, I was just doing like you do. (laughs) John, that is not fair, John. My wife's opinion of me has influenced my child that he doesn't even want some of the stuff I blessed him with. (laughs) Received blessings... Listen to this, should never be put aside, put, never put aside God's will. Abraham pop, was promised blessings by God. I want you to know you've been promised some blessings by God. Somebody say, and look at the pastor. Everybody look at me right now and say, I have some guarantees. Say, Pastor, I have some guarantees. 
I want you to know, remember, I, I didn't have time to read the whole story, but you need to look and, and see what Abram received. God said, I'm going to make you famous in my sight. I'm going to make you somebody in my sight. Your name might not ever be in lights here, but it's not about what you get here. It's about what you promise there. And let me remind you, the progress of your life has to have a process. And we do not celebrate the progress. The finality is not the issue. The process is the promise. Because you'll know more about the process. You'll know more about God in the process than you ever will. Some of us don't like the process. Some of us get all frustrated with the process. Anybody ever had one of those Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays? How many of you ever had Monday all week? How many of you ever had a Monday on Sunday? Okay, I don't want you to raise your hand on this. Is there any couple that's ever had a discussion on Sunday morning you would not want the pastor to hear? I'll say that again. Is there anybody here that's ever had a discussion on Sunday on the way to church, even about where to park in the parking lot? Hmm. I know. You, you told me where to park today. <laughs> Mr. Dewey, I'm thinking he's not riding with her. That's what he's doing. He's, actually, he's, he's a real man. I decide where I'm parking today. He got to park where he wanted. Then he got out and told me where to park. He said, you can park right there. I'm thinking, he's heard Miss Delia say, you can park right there. <laughs> what a man he is. <laughs> well, my last trip. <laughs> Justin, might as well go for it, right, dude? <laughs> Just blow it open, babe. We're going to give you a lot of room. <laughs> Send that to Pastor Karen. D- define those Assigned to your future. Justin, you guys, come here. Oh, oh, come here, Hondurans. I come to Cyprus to a men's retreat. These guys have never been to the men's retreat before. You know what's happened? I am, I am right now. I, these guys have been assigned to my future. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the room the other night listening to, to them and listening to Pastor Paul. And I mean, Holy Ghost spoke to me. My guys know it. And, and, and I, I'm supposed to give them an offering. And don't misunderstand me. I didn't come here to give Hondurans an offering. I wasn't ready. I didn't bring my checkbook. But so the Holy Ghost said, and I'm like, oh, come on. They're, they're, you know, that's Christ's family church is taking care of them. And the Holy Ghost said, I told you to give them an offering. And I t- he told me, he said, you make sure if they want to come back next year, they have the money to come back next year. Because, you see, you never know who's going to be assigned to your future. And don't miss, let me take you back to number one. I'm only going to travel with somebody that's going somewhere. Get over here around me. Come over. Act like you like me. Yeah. Y'all look at one another and say, I like that guy. guy. Louder. I like that guy. guy. (laughs) Because if you're going somewhere, I'm going to be with you, and you might as well like me because you need to make sure you're traveling with somebody that wants to bless you and that is not selfish and is willing to give. Am I talking to anybody to make sure that you understand God's got a purpose and a blessing over your life, and you want somebody to celebrate that blessing with you and not to be tied down to something that's temporal and living in a dead place from yesterday. We're going somewhere, and God's promise is over our life, and we've got a relationship with him that compares to none. Can you give him a hand clap of worship and a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. I just figured out that countdown means my time. Can you start that over? I didn't catch that. (laughs) I'm going to get me one of them for you. (laughs) No. Our people would not like that. Embrace those who uncork your gratitude. Embrace those that uncork your gratitude. Some of you have, from time to time, uncorked some things. You know, you can have the greatest bottle of water on a hot day, but if you don't take the top off, you'll never know if it's of any value. Don't hang around people that want to keep you plugged up. 
hang around people and get involved somewhere. Get involved in this house that wants you to be poured out because only in being poured out can you be filled up. And if you end up letting this bottle, this bottle of water will ultimately start tasting like this plastic. You leave it long enough, it'll have a plastic taste. Identify the difference between fun and fulfillment. Too many of us are chasing fun instead of asking for fulfillment. And let me remind you in finality that all of this begins with discovering Christ. And if you don't know who Jesus is today... I want you to know it's a great time to embrace him. And if you love the Lord this morning, would you say amen? amen? And if you're thankful for his blessings in your life, would you give him one more hand clap of worship? One more hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's all stand together. You didn't have to quit that quick just because the music is back there because I've learned that I can ignore them if I need to. What, what, a, what a great, great, great treat it has been. I really mean that. And when Pastor George Lee says that this is a significant time for the men of our church, we include the women and the boys and the girls and say this is a great, a great, great time. I uh, want you to just take a look around. The room's almost full. Just look at the, the people that are around you. Some people that are new here, some people who have been here from day one uh, when we started. We're not the largest. We don't have the most fabulous facility. We don't have the greatest music. Got great music, but maybe not the greatest. But I'll tell you what, you'll never find a place where people love you more. You'll never find a place where people love you more. So what we decided to do a few years ago is to uh, capitalize on our pluses and try to minimize our minuses. And one of the pluses that we had was that we've always, we love people. And you'll find here that the love is really genuine. People go through all kinds of things. I've listened to stories from you guys this weekend that I have not heard before. And I realized that kind of the median age of the guys who were here this weekend was probably somewhere around 40 or so. But some of you have already lived two or three lives. And uh, it's just amazing what God has done in your life. So I've learned things about you that I really appreciate. You know, yesterday, just a small group of us standing around, and Michael back there begins to talk about his grandfather and his legacy. And when he did... The Holy Spirit just fell. We're outside at a picnic table. Fifteen guys, just all of a sudden, we all fall quiet and listen to what he has to say because we need to hear it. Something transforming taking place in each one of our lives. And, and I, I love Michael. He, he, he and uh, his wife, they, they are uh, involved in the middle school ministry and they have taught our middle school kids. But I have not, I've never heard that part of him before and I, I'm just saying uh, Pastor George Lee thank you I mean you've brought something you and Charles uh, have brought something to us that have this weekend and Justin you guys you guys have brought something uh, to us my brother Doug he's over there I thank God for him he's a miracle he's a walking miracle the first mentor in my life and over the years, we kind of, not straight away, but he was one way and I was the other. And I would pray for him, God, just rescue him. And, and boy, the Lord has restored him. He's going on 20 years sober right now, and, and, and God's using him. And, uh, he uh, lives outside his life, lives outside himself. And I, I could just go on and on. God bless you guys. And I just pray. That as we we really this morning is kind of our wrap up for our retreat. I pray that God will use you wherever you go, just that He will use you, not beginning uh, next week, but right now today that He will use you. Is there anyone here that wants to be used of God? You know, oh my! A couple of weeks ago we had a, 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 a re, we had a reception for 
Valson Abraham, our friend from India, Curtis Nestegard and his beautiful wife, Jewel. Uh, Y'all just wave your hands. They're, they're a part of his team, and they travel, and uh, they represent India Gospel Outreach around the world. I didn't realize this, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. Curtis is 83 years old. And as I shared with you guys, that at every that that legacy is generational, and that direction from God is generational. And at every stage of your life, God is going to use you in a powerful way. Whether you're 15 years old or 85 years old, you are essential to the kingdom of God. So look for those opportunities. Look for those opportunities to be a blessing, blessing to others. We're not trying to build life groups. We're trying to connect people out of that come life group. So we're not trying to build a big church. We're trying to love people out of that comes whatever God wants it to be, right? Amen. If you have never received Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, I want to give you that opportunity to do so uh, today.